Hello everyone, uh, another video to Fresh Portugal's uh, YouTube uh, video series on taxation for expats in Portugal. Um, I'm Zé Fischer, I'm the founder of Fresh Portugal, uh, here with Enrique, uh, a Portuguese tax lawyer. Uh, and um, today we're going to talk about uh, digital nomad taxation uh, in Portugal. It's actually, um, so we are recording these videos, um, uh, a few of them in today. So this is the last one for today. I'm going to try and do it quite light. Um, and unlike the, the previous proper videos that we've done, we don't have a particular agenda um, for this one. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's more like a podcast style free talk. Um, on the, which I think uh, uh, corresponds well with the uh, good, fun, uh, loose uh, and, and cool crowd of uh, uh, digital nomads. Uh, and yeah, I mean, digital nomads is a pretty big group, isn't it? I mean, it has the uh, ultra wealthy uh, crypto traders and e-commerce people, and it also has uh, yoga teachers and um, um, yeah, also, also really a very wide spectrum of People and you've been working a lot with the Shalomas, right? Sure, sure is it. Uh, it's a huge community here in Portugal. Uh, there's the crypto community, the Web3, uh, the, for example, the freelancers. We have a lot of people uh, looking for Portugal mainly because of the good weather, good food, and mainly the tax system, the so-called NHR that they loved. So... Uh, there's a lot for us tax experts to explain and feed them into the right direction. So it's the it's the capital, it's kind of the digital nomad capital of the world, isn't it? I mean, there's uh, tens of thousands. Yes, tens of thousands. Uh, Portugal, Lisbon's called the Silicon Valley of Europe. So it's an amazing country, and they, they are really a really nice community to to handle together, to go to bars. They are very alive. So we, 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 it's our obligation to show them the right tax directions. Uh, well, well, we're going to sort out some shots after we're done with, uh, with this video to feel cooler. Um, in, in the face of this, uh, uh, of this digital nomad wave, but let's just jump kind of straight perhaps to the mind, to, to, to what quite concerns or bothers or is interesting for the person considering P Portugal. Uh, now is as a destination to go to and is now in Bali and wondering whether you know they want to go back to Europe and they're wondering whether Portugal is the place and someone told them or they've heard or there's been a rumor that you don't pay any taxes in Portugal um, I mean is that um, um, is that uh, the typical case let's put it this way or is that even possible yeah I heard a lot of stories like that uh, mainly you're going to uh, end up paying like a fair tax here. Uh, it's lower than a lot of European countries, uh, mainly in your first year. That's why a lot of uh, digital nomads love Portugal because I'm going to stay there for like one or two years, then uh, go back to Bali, go to Italy, go to Cyprus. So during these first years, for example, if they open a freelance activity here in Portugal, uh, they can have like a 15% scout, generally speaking. And he's they are their personal income tax, so and no social security. So, for a person who is a, a professional digital nomad to stay one year to discover a new country, amazing Portugal, uh, it's very good to hear that they have fifteen percent discount of personal income tax and no social security at all. So it's a good thing for them to hear. Very disappointing though, if the expectation is zero, right? Right, but some some of them uh, they have like good international structures. So they have a uh, lot offshore, or they have offshore companies, but uh, being here in Portugal as a tax resident to have an offshore company, for example, uh, BVI, Belize, there's a league, long tax haven't lease here in Portugal. So uh, it's, they, 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 they want to have the zero taxation, but it's very hard to travel that really well. But there's a need really look here in Portugal. Uh, only if you have like uh, dividends from a well-structured company that you not, do not manage your business from here, from Portugal, I mean, uh, a lot of like different circumstances that you can end up with zero taxation. So, but so let's 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 narrow so let's narrow down on this uh, a, a little bit because I think you actually touched on a, on a really interesting subject. Because one of the difficulties that we have in tax planning for expats with families that come here to settle is um, if they are utilizing uh, foreign company structures. 
then we always come across the difficulty of, okay, so you have a foreign company, but it's managed from Portugal. So we have this difficult, okay, so we need to either find a solution to that, or uh, they have to accept that this is not a truly uh, foreign uh, structure. But digital nomads that are moving from one place to another could potentially benefit more from um, foreign companies uh, structuring because they are not in Portugal most of the time. Is that fair to say? Sure, sure, sure. It is. It is very fair, fair to say. And for example, during the last country that they did this digital moment were living, they make friends, they had partners who still are in that country who manage the, the, the business. So he's just in Portugal creating content, but the, there's a, a, a partner who is in Cyprus, for example, uh, uploading or like updating or like uh, posting online that content, so managing everything. Uh, so truly international companies where there are people in different countries doing different things and and one of them or more than one person lives in Portugal and receives profit by way of dividends could end up paying no tax in Portugal, right? It is it is a possibility. It is. So the, the 0% is, it, it's not easy. Um, it's not, but it's not totally a myth. No, it's not totally a myth, but you have to, to be uh, ahead of the tax authority in Portugal. You have to, to, to plan, you have proper tax planning, and of course you can, you can benefit from zero taxation in Portugal. So if we are um, uh, talking about the kind of the wealthier type, uh, entre digital entrepreneurs um, making six figure plus incomes Portugal really is a fantastic place uh, for them to settle themselves even for a longer period of time and become tax residents while they're continuing their additional nomads journey sure sure they can have like the entire 10 years of holiday chart uh, benefiting themselves with this 0% dividend taxation for example and they, they can explore another jurisdiction to move or Italy or Cyprus, for example, with like special tax benefit as well. But Porto, uh, for sure, for digital moments, they can have like a 10 years. But only so long as they plan properly. Yeah. Properly. Yeah, that's the, the right path to stick. And we've, we've talked about in a different video, we talked about um, DAC6 and, and generally uh, limitations on international planning um, when you already become a tax resident. So we can't really stress enough the importance of early planning uh, before you before you come right you right it's right it's right so well, before choosing like your next step the digital moment should take into consideration taxation and, and properly think about before moving so it's the best structure the best uh circumstances of course not 100 percent uh uh, right for all people because we already go, go to the place of Portugal and then you want to, to establish a proper tax planning. Uh, we can, of course, we can help and we're another tax expert, but the best thing to do is to plan for. Let's talk about crypto. Um, and this crypto is to some extent kind of synonymous with, uh, with the digital development community, although there are lots of people that don't do anything with crypto at all. Uh, it does seem that the adoption of, of cryptocurrencies and crypto assets within the digital nomad community is, is very is considerable. Um, and there's been a kind of a big change. It used to be, a, Portugal used to be a no tax crypto zone, uh, but not anymore, right? Right. Uh, so Portugal, uh, the good thing about Portugal and the, the, the crypto assets is because Portugal uh, had since last year, the, the, they, 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 they enact the 2022 budget. So since January of this year, there's a proper law dealing with a lot of uh, aspects related to cryptocurrency. So, for example, if you, you're not going to pay uh, capital gains on your uh, crypto assets, if you hold them for more than one year. So that's crystal clear. Uh, so, for, for example, if you trade uh, stable coins for another crypto, crypto to crypto, uh, if you hold that for one year, you're not going to be uh, taxed. Uh, however, there's a lot of myth. If I receive my payments in crypto, I don't have to pay taxes. That's totally wrong. For example, if I render service and receive the payment crypto, I have to pay. I have to to pay 
taxes uh, the same the same as I get like fiat. So yeah, you have to. Talk. But if you have a good structure that's planned up front, whether you receive fiat or crypto, you could still benefit from a fantastic. Benefit. Yeah, sure. And the the new the, this new uh, Portuguese tax legislation about crypto also uh, gives you the opportunity to render some kind of crypto related service as a validator with a special tax bracket. Uh, so you can combine this kind of tax bracket with the NHR and pay like a real, really low tax rate here in Portugal. So people actually doing crypto work, validating. Yes, yes. yeah, from Portugal. So if you, if you Staking work, as well? Uh, staking as well, we have to consider to access if this kind of uh, capital income or like your rendering service. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit tricky, but uh, this new tax legislation created a very regulated uh, system environment. So it's it's good to be uh, regulated and know there is a law so you feel more comfortable about the so capacity. On, on one hand, now you have exposure to tax in some circumstances, but on the other hand, you know where you stand, yes. uh, which is very much missing from other types of uh, other parts of, of uh, tax legislation. Yes. And uh, it's uh, something that we, we recently come, came across quite a bit um, Portugal is a fantastic place to exchange uh, crypto to fiat, isn't it? Yes, it is. There's a lot of uh, regulated bank here, so uh, you can you can move your access, you can swap your coins, digital coins, cryptocurrency to fiat inside the same bank, like the digital one and the, and the traditional one. So the Portuguese uh, bank already authorized some banks to do uh, this kind of uh, service. So. Uh, you have access to a European bank, as access to to the entire world. It's a good, good country. So still a good place for for crypto people, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Great. Well, I think um, this this kind of touches on the main subject. It's kind of just to recoup the uh, digital nomads with normal people salaries can come here and then benefit from a low tax rate. But digital nomads with very high salaries can, could could plan around it and, and achieve fantastic outcomes. And then the crypto people are still welcome, um, even though they're expected to pay some tax some, in some circumstances. Uh, but yeah, still still a great place for this sort of nomads. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Well, until the next one then. Thanks, Erika.